everyone. I am Sergeant Monica C. Manuel, Philippine Army Reserve from 105th Community Defense Center, 1st Regional Community Defense Group. I live in Barangay Bayawas, Urdaneta City, Pangasinan, and I am 21 years old, born August 28, 1999 at Urdaneta City, Pangasinan. I finished my advanced ROTC at Pangasinan State University, Urdaneta Campus. I am currently a fifth year Bachelor of Science in Civil Engineering student at Pangasinan State University, Urdaneta Campus. I finished my ROTC Summer Camp Training 31-32 and Advanced ROTC Academic Phase Training 41-42 at Manawag, Pangasinan. Before we start our lecture, these are our classroom instructions. First, keep your phone on silent mode. Next, if you feel sleepy, do some stretching or exercises. If you need to go to the CR, just go straight to the CR. For the safety precautions, in case of fire, go out and go to your safe meeting place. If you feel sudden earthquake, do the drop cover and hold. And now, we will go to our topic, the hygiene and sanitation. But why is it we need to learn this subject? You, being a cadet or a student, must be an example on how responsible you are in taking care of yourself. Not only that, getting sick nowadays is really hard. You will not be able to use your full capacity. And you can work efficiently and also it affects your family as well so we must keep our health in good shape and one way to do that is to practice hygiene and sanitation the scope of our topics after this lecture we will learn about the hygiene sanitation diseases acquired control measures and waste disposal under the waste disposal, we have the types of latrine and the rules in construction of all types of latrine. And now we will go to the hygiene. What is a hygiene? It is the science that deals with the health and its prevention and maintenance. Ito ang mga bagay na dapat gawin upang mapangalagaan ang kalusugan. And personal hygiene is the measure taken by individual to preserve his own health. Ito naman ang pangangalaga sa iyong sarili. Next is health. It is the state of individual who enjoys physical, mental, and social well-being. This is the condition of your body how you enjoy your daily activities in life. Next is the importance of personal hygiene. First one is it protects individual or group against diseases. By doing hygiene, it kills the viruses and bacteria that causes diseases. Pinipigilan din nito ang pagkalat o paglipat ng mga virus sa ibang individual. Next, it promotes sound and positive total health. You will be able to do your works efficiently dahil wala kang inindang mga sakit o karamdaman. It improves of even best one's morale because it gives confidence to face others. You know you can do your best because you don't carry any sickness. The scope of personal hygiene. What are the measures or activities we must do in order to have our personal hygiene? The first one is personal cleanliness.
These are the activities you should do to your hair. First, use clean water to wash your hair regularly, at least twice weekly, preferably once every other day, with body soap or shampoo, whichever is available. Massage your scalp well. Massage it laterally and not circularly, for this will remove dead skin cells, excess oil, and dirt. Then, rinse well with clear water. Conditioner is helpful if you have longer hair, as it makes the hair smoother and easier to comb, but hair doesn't need to have conditioner. Next is, use a white tooth comb for wet hair as it's easier to pull through. Using narrow tooth comb may break the strands of your hair. Dry the hair on the head with a clean towel. Never share a towel with someone else. And comb as well, for it can possibly transfer the dirt that comes from the others that causes foreign bodies to your hair such as lice and dandruffs. And lastly, comb the hair to look beautiful for the day. Next is the skin. First one, showering or bathing regularly to keep the skin clean. Ito ay nagtatanggal ng dumi o bakterya sa katawan na sanhi ng iritasyon sa katawan. Next, using absorbent body powder to control moisture buildup. Pay particular attention to areas where wetness is a problem, such as underarms, between the thighs and buttocks, feet, and for female, under the breast. Ang paggamit ng absorbent body powder ay nakakatulong upang mabawasan ang labis na pagpapawis na nagdudulot ng hindi kaaya-ayang amoy sa katawan. Next, wearing the uniform properly and modifying the wear of the uniform when directed. Utility uniforms are designed to fit loosely to allow for ventilation and provide protection from the sun. Dapat isuot ang uniforms kung saan dapat isuot dahil ito ay dinisenyo sa iba't ibang gamit. Next, wear moisture wicking undergarments designed to pull moisture away from the skin, such as the cotton. Next, changing into clean dry socks and applying antifungal foot powder to protect the feet from prolonged periods of dampness. Dapat palitan na agad ang mga basang medyas o kasuutan dahil ito ay maaaring magdulot ng sakit. Lastly, applying insect repellent sunscreen when needed kapag madaming insekto sa paligid. Next is Clothing Change your underclothing daily if possible. Inspect them for lice, fleas, or other bug that may keep you itchy. Maaari ding pagpagin muna ang mga damit bago ito isuot. Next, change clothing, shoes, or socks immediately after they are got wet to avoid getting colds, athlete's foot, and other illnesses. Hand washing and sanitizing. Always wash your hands with soap and water after doing fatigue duty. After engaging in strenuous exercise, before eating or preparing food, and after coming out of the comfort room. Fatigue duty is a labor assigned to military men that does not require the use of armament, such as cleaning, digging, and draining. Kailangan nating magugas ng kamay dahil maaaring may kumapit na dumi na maaaring pagmulan ng mga bakterya at viruses. Next, use alcohol-based hand sanitizing solutions or commercial cleansing wipes when soap and water is not available. Next, batting. Take a bath once every day as minimum but your feet, hands, and private parts. When water is scarce, 
you may bath at least twice a week. If water availability is worse, scrub your body regularly with clean, wet cloth. Next, particular attention should be given to a sweaty areas or places that become wet, such as armpits, feet, genitals, between thighs and buttocks, and under the breast. Mouth and teeth Brush your teeth at least twice a day, preferably after breakfast and before going to bed. Brush your teeth on the inside and outside, away from the gums and towards the cutting surface of the teeth. If toothbrush is not available, rinse mouth after eating, then wrap a piece of cloth around a finger and wipe the surfaces of the teeth and gums. For the utensils, use only your own eating and drinking utensils if possible. You may contact disease from infected mess gear or personal articles of others. For the same reason, avoid borrowing and lending your own pipes, towels, shoes, and etc. Maaaring ang nahiram mong gamit ay nailapag sa isang contaminated na lugar at nagamit mo ito. Maaring ikaw ay makakuha ng sakit galing dito. Venereal diseases or the sexually transmitted diseases. First, do not associate with infected people who may be carrier of the disease. If you think you have caught any of these sexually transmitted diseases, report to your medical officer at once. For any venereal diseases can be cured much easier and quickly on its early stage. Untreated VD may result to death or permanent damage to your skin. Another scope of personal hygiene is the exercise, recreation, and relaxation. Exercise It is to condition body and wear out unnecessary fats and calories. Exercise your muscles and joints regularly. Inactivity may do equal damage to your health as extreme exertion or fatigue. Also, exercise gives you a good body shape. Next, healthy mind. Preserve and establish a healthy mental attitude and emotional reaction. In order to achieve that, give yourself a break. Relax your mind. Engage your sport and go to your favorite places. Now we will go to Sanitation It is the science of using measure that prevent diseases and to promote individual health. Itong mga bagay na ginagawa natin upang mapuksa ang virus at mapigilan ang pagdami nito upang maiwasan ang pagkakaroon ng sakit. Field Sanitation It is the prevention of diseases by eliminating or controlling the factors which may form links in disease transmission. And what are those factors? Is the water, food supplies, waste, insects, and housing. The first factor, the water. Prime necessity and one of the four basic needs for existence of life. No man can last more than four or five days without drinking water. Water is utilized as bathing, cooking, washing chemical agents. So, water is really important. So, we should have a clean and safe water. And these are some of the ways to do that. Impurities of water can be treated by use of chloride or a powerful germicide. 8 to 10 drops of iodine per 1 gallon of water. Or boiling for at least 30 minutes. The sources of water. 
First is the surface water, almost dirty and contaminated, except of those running and stream, and spring in which there are residents. Next is the rain water, or antubigulan. It is directly collected from the roofs. Next is the underground water. Example of these are the wells and spring. It is the cleanest source of water. Next is the public water supplies, or government supplies and private supplies. Some of these waters are already treated. Now, food supplies. Foods are maintained at appropriate temperatures, normally in cool, dry places, and served within specified time periods to ensure that the foods are safe to consume. Ang mga pagkain ay may kaukulang oras o pangkainin dahil maaari itong mapanis. Next, make sure foods, drinks, and ice are purchased from civilian vendors approved by preventive medicine personnel. For our soldiers, especially on those on the operations, they may use this for terrorist attacks. Next, food service personnel and soldiers use hand washing devices as appropriate. Dapat ang mga bagay na ginagamit sa paghahanda ng pagkain ay ginagamit ng maayos o sa dapat paggamitan. Next, all food waste is transported to an approved disposal site, buried and burned daily, at least 30 meters from the food preparation area and water resources. Because the leakage coming from the waste can contaminate the foods. Next is Waste Food must be stored in clean receptacles. Siguraduhin ang mga lalagyan ay malinis. Garbage, leftovers, and other refuse must be disposed at designated dumping areas or garbage pits where they may be covered with soil or burn. Dahil ang mga napabayang basura ay pwedeng dapuan ng mga insekto gaya ng langaw. Ito ay magdadala ng mikrobyo na maaaring pumunta sa mga pagkain at magresulta ng sakit. Next is Insects Example of these are flies, mosquitoes, lice, ticks, mites, cockroaches, and rats. The simplest way to control the increase of these pests is to cut off their nourishment by screening heads and messes and by disposing waste properly. Dapat takpan ng mabuti ang mga pagkain at siguraduhin itapon ang mga basura sa tamang lalagyan. Next, you must also drain or soil a stagnant pools of water to kill the larvae of insects when in the field. Maari kasi ang mga tubig na ito ay pag-itlugan ng mga insekto na nagdudulot ng pagdami ng mga ito. Next, bury empty ration cans and turn split coconut husk upside down to prevent disease carrying insects and rodents. At siguraduhin din ng nakatambak na gamit ay hindi bahayan ng mga peste o insekto na maaring magdala ng mga sakit. Now, we will go to diseases acquired with poor sanitation. The respiratory diseases. These diseases are transmitted from man to man through oral and nasal discharge of inflected individual, or it is transmitted through droplets, usually caused by viruses but may be also be due to bacteria or other organisms. Example of these diseases are cold, cough, influenza, sore throat, acute bronchitis, and worse is the pneumonia and tuberculosis. Next is 
diarrhea illness. It is transmitted by food and water that has become contaminated with feces and urine of other person or animals. Maaring ikaw ay nakakain ng hindi ligtas na pagkain o inumin. Food is another major cause of diarrhea when it is prepared or stored in unhygienic conditions. Unsafe domestic water storage and handling is also an important risk factor. Ang mga kinakain o iniinom natin ang pinakamalaking nakakaapekto ng ganitong sakit. Kaya ang mga pagkain na galing sa hindi malinis na lugar ay nagdudulot ng sakit. Halimbawa nito ang mga isda o seafoods na galing sa polluted na tubig. Ang mga sintomas nito ay abnormal loose or watery stool. LBM o ang loose bowel movement, pain in abdomen, and nausea o ang karamdaman na parang nasusuka. Next is the insect bite diseases. It is transmitted to person by insect bites. And these are the common insects that causes diseases. First one is mosquitoes. It can cause you dengue, malaria, and Zika virus. The symptoms are high fever, headache, muscle ache, chills, fatigue, vomiting, and skin rush. Another common insects are ticks, usually 3 to 5 millimeters. The common diseases you can get is the tick-borne encephalitis, the tick-borne spotted fever, and the Lyme disease. This may be the result to the beaten area. And these are the symptoms. Skin rush, red patch, fever, headaches, swollen joints, skin lesion, dizziness, and muscle pain. Another common insect is Sunflies, or also known as nick-nick. Many of these is located at the beaches of Palawan. The common disease is leishmaniasis. This may happen to the infected areas. The symptoms are fever, weight loss, red bump, and blisters. Next is triatomini or the kissing bugs or cone nose bugs. This is a blood sucking insect. This is the result. And the symptoms are fever, swelling of lymph nodes, swelling at the infected areas, an enlarged heart or liver. This may happen to 20 to 30 percent of people with Chagas disease. Experience symptoms 10 to 25 years later. Next is the Chichi flies or the Tick Tick flies. It is a blood sucking flies that is 8 to 17 millimeters, and you may have a sleeping sickness. The symptoms are red sore at the site of bite, severe headache, lack of appetite, insomnia, enlarged lymph nodes, muscle and joint pain, and skin rash.
Next is bed bugs are small, flat, parasitic insects that feed on human blood or animals. The symptoms are red spots, itchy wells on exposed skin. Next is venereal diseases or sexually transmitted diseases. It is a disease that is contracted and transmitted by sexual contact caused by microorganisms that survive on the skin or mucous membranes or that are transmitted via semen, vaginal secretions, or blood during intercourse. And these are the symptoms. Sores or bumps on the genitals or in the oral or rectal area. Painful or burning urination. Discharge from the penis. Unusual or odd smelling vaginal discharge. Unusual vaginal bleeding. Pain during sex. Sore or swollen lymph nodes particularly in the groin, but sometimes more widespread. Lower abdominal pain. Fever. Rush over trunk, hands or feet. Now we will go to skin diseases. The first one is dermatophytosis, also known as ringworm, is a fungal infection of the skin. Typically, it results in a red, itchy, scaly circular rash. Another is athlete's foot, is a fungal infection that usually begins between the toes. It commonly occurs in the people whose feet have become very sweaty while confined within tight-fitting shoes. And these are the control measures. Avoid close physical contact to positive identified carrier of the disease. Next, proper ventilation of quarters. Water purification. Careful selection and preparation of food. Maintenance of mess sanitation. Proper waste disposal. And personal hygiene. Next is waste disposal. What is a waste? It is a general term covering all types of refuse resulting from the living activities of human or animals. O ito ang mga dumi na nanggagaling sa tao o hayop. Types of waste. There are four types of waste. First one is human waste. Black water, liquid waste containing human urine, fecal matter, and blood or body fluids. Itong mga dumi galing sa katawan ng tao. Next, liquid waste, gray water, liquid waste containing water used for bathing or liquid waste from kitchen operation. Next is garbage. It is any kind of non-liquid organic materials resulting from food service operations o ito ang mga kalat o basura na nabubulok. Next one is rubbish. It is a waste consisting of non-organic materials such as boxes, cans, paper, or plastics. Mga hindi nabubulok. Field sanitation devices used for human waste disposal. Latrine. If toilet is not available, we can make latrines. A latrine is a toilet or an even simpler facility that is used as a toilet within a sanitation system. Types of latrine The straddle trench latrine 
used in short bivouac or temporary or casual shelter or lodging. And FTX or field training exercises. Usually, it lasts for one to three days. Four trenches for 100 people. The dimension is 1 feet wide, 4 feet long, 2.5 feet deep, and additional trenches will be 2 feet apart. Wooden planks on side for traction. Ito ay ginagamit upang hindi madulas. Each person covers their excreta after use para may wasan ang pagdapo ng mga insekto upang ito rin ay hindi mga moy. Next is Deep Pit Latrine Used for longer period in built-up areas Last for more than 3 days Use a 2-seat or 4-seat box The 2-seat box is 3.5 feet long 2 feet wide at the base and 16 inches high For the 4-seat box, it is 7 feet long the depth of the pit should equal 1 foot for each week. The latrine will be used, plus 1 foot for the dirt cover when the latrine is closed. For example, if you are planning to stay for a week, the depth of the latrine would be 2 feet. Next, a metal urine deflector strip is placed inside the front of the box to prevent urine from soaking into the wood. Dahil ang kahoy ay madaling masira, Lalo na kapag ito ay nababasa. The Borehole or Cut Pit Latrine It is used for march and patrolling. Covered immediately with dirt after use. Approximately 1 foot deep and 1 foot in diameter. Next is Pail Latrine Waste is collected with pail. This is used if ground is too hard for digging, water table is too high. The box should be placed on a floor of impervious material such as concrete that slopes toward the rear. The slope allows wash water to drain rapidly. It should be placed that will not allow the waste to pass through for it may damage the water table. If possible, line the pails with plastic to reduce the risk of accidental spillage. Next, the urine soap pit. Dug 4 feet square by a 4 feet deep. Filled with large rocks, rubble, bricks, etc. Insert 6 pipes of 1 inch in diameter at an angle. Ventilation shafts at ends. Cover ends of each tube with a funnel and mesh material para maiwasan ang pamamahay ng insekto. The general rules in construction of all types of latrine. First, it should be all at least 100 yards or 300 feet away from the unit mess from nearest water services to ensure free from contamination. Next, a screen should be placed around the latrine. Install a hand wash devices. It should be kept clean and polished four times a day. Always treat it with chemical disinfectant spray inside to prevent multiplication of vermin or a parasitic worms or insects. Field sanitation devices used for liquid waste disposal. Soap pit are constructed the same as the urine soakage pit. It is just without a tube.
field sanitation devices used for garbage disposal. Garbage pit The preferred method of garbage disposal for short overnight stops. A standard 4 feet by 4 feet pit will service 100 people per day. Next, trench pit. For longer stays, a garbage trench is used. The trench measures 2 feet wide by 4 feet deep and is extended as needed. Bot pit, after depositing garbage in the pit, cover it to keep pest away. Field sanitation devices used for rubbish disposal. Garbage pit. For short stay, rubbish is buried in pits with the garbage, taking care to flatten cans and break down boxes. Next is the incineration. In camps where the length of stay is expected to be over a week, Rubbish is burned and the ash buried. Barrel incinerators are commonly used and must be at least 50 yards away and downwind from the camp. Dahil maaring ang mga abo ay pumunta sa camp at pwedeng magbigay ng pinsala o abala. Now the summaries. We have learned about the hygiene. What is hygiene and ways to keep our personal hygiene? Next is the sanitation. What are the things we should do to the factors affecting the sanitation of a place? Also, the different diseases acquired. Next is the control measures. And waste disposal. What are the different types of waste and different types of latrines? If you have any questions and clarifications, feel free to message us. Thank you and God bless.